and everyone in the house we've got about four, a family has four cars everyone goes out you know the boy goes to university his private university in a car mom goes to her hospital where she's a nurse dad goes to his office where he's an architect and everyone's on the road that's why we've got too much traffic and then we don't have uh, uh you know in other countries even people who have cars don't use it on weekdays they use it weekends because the transport system is good all right so like i said it's about time all right, let's move on to this story, which says uh, the National Board for Technical Education has said that for Nigeria to become one of the top 20 economies in the world, so it's about Nigeria being one of the top 20 economies in the world, uh, it must de-emphasize paper qualification. Hmm. See where this story is going? Okay, well, it says NBTE stated that Nigeria should build a skilled and competent workforce in order to attain its development goals. Uh, Adamu Kazare observed that in spite of the existence of over 100 universities and 120 polytechnics and similar institutions, educational institutions had been largely disconnected from industrial and socio-economic needs. As Nigeria aspires to become a major player in the world economy in line with the vision 2020, it is very clear that the most crucial vehicle for attaining such amb ambitious goal apart from power infrastructure is a skilled and competent work workforce. This is necessary for the effective implementation of national development projects and for attracting necessary international investment by high-tech industries. So basically, we have lots of people who have, like you say, Fali, who have a qualification, but who can't do much. And what uh, good is that to the economy? And what good is that to the country? We have people who have 2-1, but are not even useful at the office, who have 2-2, but cannot even do anything. So, well, like the headline says, uh, FG says, uh, FG, well, someone says, NBTE, to be specific, says FG must de-emphasize paper qualification. We need skilled people. Skilled people will definitely help the economy. All right, so everyone has be, been talking minimum wage for a while. Let's see uh, what uh, the story is, an update on that one. Well, the Oyo State chapter of the Patriotic Forum has said that the 18,000 Naira minimum wage recently approved by the federal government may not be possible for implementation in all the states of the Federation. The forum therefore asked the federal government to go back to the drawing board and arrive at a figure that would be acceptable to all the states rather than imposing a figure on them. The forum made the call in a statement made available to a uh, correspondent in Ibadan. And also, well, what I have to say about this story is, I know every state differ. You can't, well, right now, realistically com uh, compare Lagos to some of the states. So if you're asking that they all uh, do the same thing. I think that's a little unrealistic. I think everyone needs to go to the drawing board. They've got new leaders. They've all got to sit down and see how this and this. I like what uh, Governor Jimobi did. He brought out some of the stuff that might have, if we pay minimum wage, this is what it will affect. I mean, this and this and this will go down. We don't have this much money here, which is good. We need to hear the stuff. We need to make our leaders accountable, transparent, so that every cobble that is spent, we want to know about it. And that is, that is good. So like that headline says, not every state can you know, do the 18,000 Naira minimum wage at this point. We've got to know why each state cannot and why this state can. All right, at this point, I'll take a short music break. And uh, I've got something from John Legend and The Roots and uh, featuring Black Thought as well on this song. So enjoy it. I'll be right back with more just from the dailies. So don't go anywhere. Morning's bad.